This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Jihadi Psychopath by Dr. Jamie Glazov. I will tell you as an expert on Sharia, as a former child bride who has suffered and faced my own jihadi psychopath, I want you to go and order this book on Amazon.com or go to jamieglazov.com. Get a copy for yourself. You know why? Because you need to be equipped with the knowledge to fight our enemy so you can save your daughters and your granddaughters from future of Islam. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazov moment. Tonight, Muslim parents suffocate two westernized daughter. My friends, we've recently discovered the horrific details of the tragic case of 17-year-old Shafalia Ahmed, who was murdered back in September 2003 in the town of Warrington in England. She was murdered by her Muslim parents in her own home in front of her siblings. Shafalia's parents hated her westernized life, her choices in clothes, the way that she lived. She didn't abide by Sharia law, in other words, they were often calling her a prostitute, a whore. They beat and starved her as a punishment regularly. And there's many other horrific details to this story and what this poor girl had endured. The Muslim parents were also furious at Shafalia because she had refused and fought against a forced marriage that they tried to impose on her. Now, on September 11, 2003, and what a date, they stuffed a carrier bag into her mouth until she suffocated. Her horrified siblings, three younger sisters, and her brother watched on in horror. They were forced to watch on because the parents wanted to make an example out of Shafalia. The father put her dead body into a car and dumped her in a river 70 miles away from their home. The parents warned the other kids that the same would happen to them, that they would be murdered as well if they ever spoke of the incident again. It took nine years before one of Shafalia's sisters, Alesha, finally broke rank and overcame her fear, overcame the threats to reveal her family's horrific secret and the parents' um, just evil, evil crime. She revealed it to the police. There's a new documentary that's come out now, When Missing Turns to Murder, and in that new documentary, we learn the horrific extent of Shafalia's abuse, the wall of silence that the police had confronted with her family and the wider Muslim community following this young girl's death. Just as a side note for a minute, if honor killings are so un-Islamic, it's very interesting that not only was there silence in the family, but in the wider Muslim community. Well, 16 years have now passed. Some of the siblings are, uh, still refuse to admit their parents' as vile crime, uh, but this younger sister has come forward. A lot of evidence has come forward, and so we know a lot more of what's going on. I'd like to ask, why did, again, well, first of all, I'll go back to that in terms of the Muslim community. Why did no one come forward in the Muslim community that did know about this murder, if honor killing is technically wrong in Islam. Hmm, I wonder if it has anything to do with the reliance of the traf a traveler, the reliance of the traveler, the classic manual of Islamic law, that it actually authorizes Muslim parents to kill their own children. Wonder if it has anything to do with that. Let's discuss a little bit of what happened to Shefalia and how it's connected to Islam. Now, I credit this to Robert Spencer once again at Jihad Watch. He's written about this story, look it up. And uh, I credit to him some of the facts I'm gonna say in a minute because he documents this on Jihad Watch in his work also all the time, but in the blog on this. So a couple things I want, we wanna state here. The Reliance of the Traveler, which is the classic manual of Islamic law, authorizes, once again, Muslim parents killing their children. As Robert Spencer has documented, Muslims commit 91% of honor killings worldwide. For instance, the Palestinian Authority gives pardons 
or suspended sentences for honor murders. Iraqi women have asked for tougher sentences for Islamic honor murders, for those who get off lightly. It's happening till this day. Up until now, no progress is being made. In Syria, in 2009, a law was scrapped that limited the length of sentences for honor killings, but the new law said that a man can still benefit from extenuating circumstances in crimes of passion or honor, provided he serves a prison term of no less than two years in the case of killing. I wonder why they would make an excuse or leniency in that way. In 2003, the Jordanian parliament voted down on Islamic grounds a provision designed to stiffen penalties for honor killings. Al Jazeera has reported that, quote, Islamists and conservatives said the laws violated religious traditions and would destroy families and values. This is in connection to what happened in Jordan in terms of them upholding uh, honor killings in this legislation. Ladies and gentlemen, when we deal with a situation like Shafaliya Ahmed, the world turns its back, we understand that. Many of you are probably only hearing this for the first time. It is Islamic. What happened to Shafaliya is Islamic. When are we going to have a media and a culture that discusses how it is Islamic and why it is Islamic? Where is the discussion of Islamic theology in our higher culture, in and our establishment media? When is CNN and MSNBC going to discuss this, going to give respect to 17-year-old Shafalia Ahmed? Invite Robert Spencer, Pamela Geller, Brigitte Gabriel, Nani Darwish to discuss why Shafalia died, what it is in Islamic theology that serves as a buffer to this. Well, that's not happening. And there's a reason that it's not happening. Shafalia Ahmed, 17-year-old girl, suffocated to death by her Muslim parents because of what Islamic law, because of what Islam sanctions them doing. And yet, where's the Me Too movement? Oprah, Chelsea Handler, Kathy Griffin, Whoopi Goldberg, Rosie O'Donnell, Joy Behar, Amy Schumer, Ashley Judd, I can go on and on. You care so much about women. Oh, you're so much for women's rights. When are you going to say something about Shafalia Ahmed? Why haven't you said anything about her? Why don't you say anything? Is it because those aren't the kind of Muslim women and girls you care about? Is it because Shafalia isn't really the kind of Muslim girl you care about? Because somewhere you only care about women when it ser serves your agenda, of course. But at the Glazov Gang, we care about 17-year-old Shafalia Ahmed. We care about you, Shafalia. We think about you. We remember you. And we dedicate this show and our lives to fighting for your memory to fighting for the memory of all the girls and the women that you represent. Aksa Parvez, Shaima Alawadi, so many Muslim women and girls that have been killed in honor killings and suffered other atrocities under Islamic law. Shafalia, you represent those women and you also represent the future potential victims of jihad and of Sharia law. And we dedicate ourselves in remembering you, Shafalia, and we also dedicate ourselves to fighting for the truth, to fighting for the rights of Muslim women and girls and non-Muslim women and girls, and to defend all Muslim women and girls, non-Muslim women and girls, as I said, against totalitarianism, against oppression, against jihad and Sharia, and we will do that despite the shameless and shameful silence of our media 
and of the left that controls our boundaries of discourse, despite its shameful silence and its heartlessness on this issue. We won't forget you, Shafalia, and will continue to fight for your memory, all those that you represent, and all the potential victims in the future for whom, here at the Glazov Gang, we will continue to fight for. We'll see you on the next Jamie Glazov moment. Good night.